September 2023 was the last time we saw a new Fitbit device, which was about eight months ago. But today, Google surprised us with the announcement of a new model that features an intriguing design, but more importantly is the first Fitbit device to run Wear OS instead of the dedicated Fitbit OS you might be familiar with. Even if you aren't a hardcore Fitbit enthusiast, this is certainly a new direction for Google's wearable division. And in this video, I wanted to show you everything worth knowing about the newly announced Fitbit Ace LTE. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the 9to5Google YouTube channel channel as we are working very hard to cover the latest Google news as it comes out and we don't want you to miss any of our upcoming content. If you want to take things to the next level, you should definitely look at our channel membership where our viewers gain access to exclusive wallpaper packs, behind the scenes content, merch drops, and much more as we build out one of the best Android communities out there. Hit the join button to learn more and thank you so much for supporting us. All right, and getting started, let's take a quick look at the Fitbit Ace LTE, and the best way I can describe this device is it's basically a Pixel Watch 2 in regards to its internals, but more of a Fitbit when it comes to its design. For hardware, we have a lot of similar specs with the same Snapdragon W5 chip paired with 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. We also have the same circular pin-based charging connector with fast charging support, a similar optical heart rate sensor like we saw released with the Pixel Watch 2, alongside the usual accelerometer, gyroscope, altimeter, and ambient light sensor. There are some minor differences in specs though, like the use of Gorilla Glass 3 on the Fitbit Ace LTE instead of Gorilla Glass 5 on the Pixel Watch 2. The Fitbit Ace also has a slightly larger battery at 328 milliamp hours and a more Fitbit-like design with the squarish OLED display and detachable bands that should be familiar with Fitbit Versa or Sense users. For the build, we do have a mix of stainless steel and recycled plastic underneath alongside a large speaker cutout on the left-hand side and two large buttons on the right-hand side. The top one is for dedicated calls and Google Messages with Google Wallet support coming in the next few months, while the bottom is reserved for quick access to a carousel of games, which we will get into in a minute. Powering this device is a slightly modified version of Wear OS that does have quite a few changes to my surprise. For one, this device is heavily focused on a simplified experience, and because of that, many aspects are quite limited. General navigation has been streamlined to include quick access to core features like quick settings or notifications, and the UI has been cleaned up to include large, clearly labeled icons and text. There's also an initiative to minimize the amount of complexities like the removal of the Play Store, and there is no support for third-party apps. At first, it might seem like some of these omissions might seem strange, but the biggest reason behind it is because this device is primarily designed to be a child-focused device, or in other words, it shares a lot of characteristics with the Pixel Watch 2, but tailored towards a younger audience under the Fitbit brand. I wanted to focus on the Wear OS aspect first because I think that's the bigger piece of news, at least to me, as it's the first Fitbit device to run Wear OS, and depending on how this does, we might see much more in the future. That said, Google heavily emphasizes the Fitbit Ace's target audience is for children ages 7 and up, and with that comes a ton of features geared towards that use. Of course, we have the overly simplified version of Wear OS alongside a ton of interactive games, most of which require motion to engage with the player controls and are heavily movement-based to encourage fitness. A lot of these games try to give positive feedback in some way by including an activity ring that closes over over time as your kids get closer to their movement goals, there's a virtual Animal Crossing-like world in which the in-game character's well-being is tied to the child's physical activity, and there's an in-game point system with arcade tickets earned through physical activity accomplishments where users can get digital items in that Animal Crossing-like experience for their virtual home or custom avatar. If you're a parent then, I think you might appreciate the amount of features and control you'll have on that end. For example, you'll have the ability to limit screen time for that gaming feature we just mentioned, there's contact management controls where you can manually approve who your child can communicate with up to 20 contacts, there's real-time location tracking accessible through the Fitbit Ace app powered by Google Maps alongside activity monitoring to track steps, heart rate, and active minutes. On top of that, there will be a form of spending monitoring where the Ace LTE will let parents set allowances in Google Wallet while also receiving real-time spending notifications, which is pretty cool if you ask me. And finally, privacy is a pretty important aspect here as Google does state activity history will be deleted after 35 days, location data is deleted after 24 hours, and there is no display advertising anywhere on device. 
As a whole, I find the release of the Fitbit Ace LTE to be nothing groundbreaking but is an intriguing step in Google's wearable strategy. At least to me personally, this release could be interpreted as a test run of sorts using the Fitbit brand and Wear OS platform to assess the market for these hybrid type devices. As we know, Google's been gradually integrating Fitbit deeper and deeper into their operations among software, branding, and data, so this tells me there's an interest in taking things further. Even though this is specialized to being a kid's companion device after all, this could give us a small glimpse at what Google is capable of doing with the Fitbit brand and their potential to possibly replicate this in order to expand the Wear OS ecosystem. Either way, leave a comment and let me know what your thoughts are regarding the new Fitbit Ace LTE. This isn't all the details, I just wanted to talk about the most important ones, but if you want to learn more, I'll leave links to our full coverage on the 9to5Google Google website. Before we get out of here, huge shout out to all of our channel members on screen right now. I love the channel membership we offer and it's really motivating to see how many of you want to stick around and support our coverage and for that we greatly appreciate your help. We could not do this without you. Otherwise, this has been Jordan Floyd from 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.